Hi everyone! In this video, we will look into the Mini Mental State Examination. The Mini Mental State Examination is a 10 minutes and 30 point questionnaire. It was developed by John Hopkins Neuropsychiatrist about 40 years ago. It was originally developed to screen dementia. However, it has been a widely used screening tool to assess as a measure of general cognitive function. There are three developers of this assessment, which are Marshall F. Falstein, Susan E. Falstein, and lastly, Paul R. McHugh. The purpose of this assessment is to evaluate an adult's level of cognitive impairment, to track a patient's cognitive progress, decline or monitor responses to treatment, and lastly, to measure orientation, immediate recall, short-term verbal memory, calculation, language, and construct ability. The type of this assessment is a performance-based assessment. There are 30 questions being asked in this assessment. Five areas of cognitive functioning were assessed, which are orientation, immediate memory, attention or concentration, delete recall, and language. The indication of this assessment is people with cognitive impairment. While the contraindication of this assessment is people that are unable to understand information relevant to a decision about health. For the administration procedure, this assessment is a performance-based assessment. The client is needed to do the task asked by the therapist. Firstly, download and print the MMSE. Secondly, sit with the client in a quiet and well-lit room. Ask for the client's attention and do not set a timer. The MMSE is mostly filled out by the therapist, but give a pencil or a pen to the client for the question that requires the client to write and draw. Next, give the client as much time as needed. Lastly, review the result. Let's see how to conduct this assessment. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurhazika Atira Binti Muhammad Nasri and I am your occupational therapist for today. So right now, we are going to do the mini mental state examination to evaluate your level of cognitive impairment. So how are you feeling today? I am good, thank you. Alright, cool. So right in front of me, I have this thing. Can you name what is this? Mm, watch. Watch, okay, cool. Can you name what is this? Pen. Pen, great. Okay. Okay, I have a favor for you. Can you copy these pictures for me? Okay, cool. All right, thank you. This is example of a dummy scoring. The total score is 16 over 30. This client is experiencing moderate degree of impairment and the client's impairment is clear. She may require 24 hours supervision. The administration time for this assessment is less than 10 minutes. For the scoring procedure of this assessment, one point will be given for each correct response. To calculate the total score of the client, sum up all the correct response and the highest possible score is 30. For the interpretation, if the client scores between 25 to 30, the degree of impairment is questionably significant. If clinical symptoms of cognitive impairment are present, formal assessment of cognition may be valuable. If the client scores between 20 to 25, the degree of impairment is mild. Formal assessment may be helpful to better determine pattern and extent of deficits. If the client scores between 10 to 20, the degree of impairment is moderate. Formal assessment may be helpful if there are specific clinical indications. And lastly, if the client scores between 1 to 10, the degree of impairment is severe, patient not likely to be testable. Next, we look into psychometric properties. Firstly, reliability. For the internal consistency, the Cronbach's alpha coefficient is 0.76. This assessment has a good test retest reliability of 0.80, and the interrater reliability gives a Pearson correlation of 0.95 in a sample of 15 neurological patients. Next is validity. For the convergent validity, in patients with dementia of Alzheimer's type, correlation coefficient between the MMSE and the classification task was 0.42 and the digit recall task was 0.79. In patients with multi-infarct dementia, correlation coefficient between the MMSE and the classification task was 0.627 and the digit recall task was 0.64. For the predictive validity, MMSE correlated 0.78 with wise verbal IQ skill. The table shown is the day-to-day -day functioning of the client according to their score. Next is discriminant validity. For discriminating the healthy older adults from the patients with mild cognitive impairment MCI, the AUC of MMSE2 brief version was 0.71. 
for discriminating the patients with MCI from the patients with Alzheimer's disease, the AUC of the MMSE2 brief version was 0.93. For discriminating the healthy older adults from the patients with Alzheimer's disease, the AUC of MMSE2 brief version was 0.97. The advantages of this assessment is easy to conduct and less time-consuming, no additional tools are required, and good accessibility. Disadvantages of this assessment is bias against people with lower education, scores can be affected by psychiatric disorders, and the validity is limited for identifying patients with mild cognitive impairment. For the suitability to be used with Malaysian population, the English version of MMSE is not suitable to use in Malaysia. This is due to the language barriers and cultural differences. For example, there is one question in the assessment that is what is the season, which cannot apply in Malaysia as Malaysia is not a four seasons country. These are some of the references that I use for my video. And that is all for the mini mental state examination. Thank you and have a good day. Bye!